Hello, so this tutorial is about uh, how to do a transient variable boundary condition. Uh, the application may be uh, like uh, pulsating blood flow, uh, periodic uh, like uh, wave, introducing uh, wave flow, uh, wavy flow as a boundary condition, stuff like that. So how to do that in Fluent? Uh, so in order to do that, what I did was I uh, I already created a geometry, so let me see the geometry is just 10 meter by 2 meter domain. I just randomly created one, and uh, this is the, how the mesh looks like. If you need the detail, element size is 50 millimeter. I didn't even uh, fix the boundary walls for mostly boundary conditions, so the way I'm introducing the flow is. Uh, this is my inlet that is my outlet and these are two side walls and that's fluid domain pretty simple so if we go to fluent and i've already ran it but i will uh, show you the options again so let's say i want to uh, introduce a inlet boundary condition variable inlet boundary condition which changes with time and I'm not a big fan of UDF, so I just want to avoid uh, creating a UDF uh, file. Okay, so what I did was I created an Excel file. Uh, this is uh, the way of introducing uh, a boundary condition, variable boundary condition with profile. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a dot profile like this uh, dot profile. Uh, how to do that so initially I created the Excel sheet so time 0 velocity initial velocity is 0.1 and time step size is 0.1 so it would increase with 0.1 increment so I wrote it like this uh, e dollar 2 so as you can see this is linked with this one okay same goes and then I just hold it and drag and drop so I have uh, I have selected six, so one, two, so I have actually total uh, six variables, uh, like six time steps, I'm considering, so from zero to 0.5. If you, um, if you, uh, like the time step size here is 0.1, but in, in, in the fluent, if your time step size is lower than that, let's say 0 0.01, what Fluent will do is it will do a linear interpolation and calculate the velocity for that. Okay, so I, I did the same thing for velocity, so incrementing with time a linear increment, okay, uh, which is related to this time step size. So, how to create, how to like move this uh, uh, list of data and create the profile file. Okay, before that, uh, what this one does is uh, the, the file name, uh, the profile name would be test, and two is um, two variables in here, time and velocity. If you have three, let's say temperature as well, it would be three. Uh, six is the number of uh, data I have, okay? And the last one, zero, is uh, it's periodic or non-periodic. Periodic and non-periodic, I'll show you the difference, okay? Uh, zero means non-periodic, one means periodic. It only has two values. <clears throat> okay, let's copy and paste it. So I'll do it again. I have copied it and in order to create one, what I would do is I just open a text document or... Um, okay, fine. Text document, uh, let's open it. Uh, if I paste it like this, it should be fine. Okay, this should be fine. You can do it like this in text document. I think there is a tab. I don't know if that will cause any problem, but this should be good. Let's see. Uh, so I'll save, save it. Uh, let's name it something else. Uh, test two, let's say. Test two. Uh, and this should not be a txt file. Uh, Fluent cannot read the txt file as the profile boundary condition 
so either it should be csv or dot profile so you can uh, add file name extension allow it and then change the extension okay so just rename it the dot txt should be prof okay so yes, change it so it has become a dot profile i can open it using wordpad or something else up to you so what it will do is right now it says it's not periodic okay instead of velocity let's say this is well okay so that we don't uh, mix up with velocity okay uh, after that i'll go to fluent and by the way the file i saved it it's actually uh, in the dpo ff in the fluent folder okay in this folder this is the default folder where fluent will initially check for profile uh, if you want to add another directory you just have to do some more work but if you want fluent to directly find your uh, profile file just paste it in here okay that saves you some trouble okay let's go to fluent so general general i just made it transient because it's uh, i'm inputting some uh, profile data based on uh, which changes based on time other than that i didn't change anything in here just i'll just directly jump uh, to the boundary condition so material is air and i didn't actually change anything it's just all default features uh, in the inlet, the way we should, um, we need to apply the profile is we need to read it first. So I'll click on profile. So as you can see, it's already loaded because I loaded it, but I will delete it for you guys. So test, and there are two variables, time and velocity. Let's delete this one. So there's some issue you might see when you are actually reading it. I'll show you. So here it is, test2.prof, right? Let me open up the profile and... So I opened up the profile and now you can see the test. So now you can see the test, uh, time, velocity, both are loaded. Okay. So how, how can I use that? So I'm going to go to inlet. This is a velocity inlet type. And over here, there are a couple of other options as well. You can even use expression if you know the function uh like the uh, the function for applying velocity uh, instead of udf directly you can apply the expression in here or the, this is the profile i loaded so test time test velocity so i'm going to apply test velocity follow velocity magnitude and i'm going to click ok uh, to test it out so i'm going to do initialize again if you re uh, don't remember i made it uh, non-periodic okay so i'm gonna show you in one go what will happen if i go more than the time assigned uh, in the profile so 0.5 second right uh, let's say my time step size is 0.1 okay I, I want to make it really short and let's say 10 time steps so it's gonna go up to one second okay or so what uh, it will do is uh okay 20 instead of 20 let's say 60 durations and then calculate okay okay give me one second mm. initialize um, let's do nine time steps and uh, after initializing I'm going to create a solution animation I'm going to create a contour plot just to monitor the velocity uh, bandit uh, velocity in the domain Right now it's zero. Okay. Uh, why is it zero? It should be point 0.1. Okay. 
Okay, mic not help. Let me check the boundary condition again. Feels well. Looks good. Initialize. Solution animation. Uh, this is the contour plot time step. I want to record every time step uh, at window 3 it should display so run calculation and let's go to okay. so as you can see it's it converts the first time step is finished and it's at point 2 second then point 3 second it's updating at each time step end now it's 0.4 second so actually at the inlet it's increasing so after the end of the simulation the my uh, velocity should be 0. Uh, 0.6 still like uh, after 0. 0.5 second it became 0. 0.6 and then nothing changed so as you can see the fluctuation didn't happen uh, because this was non-periodic after I crossed point uh, five second the the boundary condition the velocity at the inlet remain at 0.6 second so let me show you the value exactly if I go to surface integral and check my inlet velocity compute as you can see it's exactly 0 0.06 second which was our final velocity okay even after 0 0.9 second it's the same velocity now if i make it periodic uh, what will happen is let's just modify uh, this one okay, actually let me show you how to uh, read another one so it's already made periodic it's the same values and everything okay so this one is periodic so i'll just load the below one and apply that and show it to you guys uh, so file I have to read the profile first so uh, I can go up read transient table and uh, transient table test 2 not I don't want to read test 2 I want to read the velo one okay uh, the velo one was read and it's the same thing uh, only this one is periodic so I'm gonna go to boundary condition and edit it and okay actually it might create a confusion so i'll just delete the oh it's already overwritten okay because they were the same name i guess you see this one is named test this one was named uh, it's confusing let me actually delete it and reload again okay I know it uh, worked fine, but uh, just for the sake of clearance. Okay. Uh, read this one, Velo. Yes. So if I go over there, now it's test time and velocity, and uh, uh, boundary condition, inlet. So it's already selected. Click OK. Now this one is periodic, so it should not remain at 0.6 second. It should change. Uh, so let's try 7. Uh, let's try 10. So after 10 time step, it should go back to uh, the initial velocity, which was 0.1. Uh, so let's see if it happens or not. Okay. This should update in a, in a bit. So after 0 0.5 second and 0 0.5 second, after one second, it should go back to 0 0.01 second velocity. So it's now 0 0.01, 0 0.02. Again, time steps converged, 0 0.03, 0 0.04, 0 0.05, one more, 0 0.06. Uh, 
and then it went back to 0 0.01 again so it's periodic it's like sinusoidal wave okay so it's uh, being repeated over and over again after the frequency you can say this is time period so time after the uh, time period is done then uh, the band recognition is repeating itself okay and as you can see just to make sure i can go to surface integral check the inlet velocity 0 0.05 did i go 10 or 9 I might have missed something, but anyways, this is the, that's the point. This way you can uh, uh, apply periodic peri with periodic or non-periodic uh, variable boundary condition, transient boundary condition, uh, with profile without using any UDF or anything like that. Thank you.